Welcome back to Friday Night Lights. We continue our Week 2 high school football coverage in Region 2. Mike, as Eisenhower blanked Sagertown to open up the year while Union City was shut out by Concordton last Friday night as the Knights were hosting the Bears in this head-to-head -head matchup. Let's head to Union City, actually, uh, opening kickoff, and let's get right to it. Eisenhower's Keegan Ekstrom receiving this kickoff on a squib and watching, watch him work the special team's magic, taking off down the right sideline. He's gone. 70 yards to pay dirt for the game's first score on the very first play from scrimmage. Actually, for the game before scrimmage. The Knights leading 7 <laughs> nothing right out of the gates. Push-ups there. Maybe I should do a few. The Eisenhower cheerleaders getting in on the action there. Later on, it's Kyler Schaefer and Owen Kearns fumbling on the exchange, recovered by Drake Vanderhoof. The Knights are once again in business for their offense. First play from scrimmage here. There Benji Bauer rips off the 87-yard run for the touchdown. Knights coming up with two huge plays to begin this contest. And moments later, it'll be Ekstrom again. As we fast forward, the 18-yard touchdown run, Eisenhower rolls to its second win of the season as the Knights outscore Union City 48-26 to tonight on the road. Move it 2-0. That's all right. I'll take the mulligan since I did your read as well <laughs> going into those highlights. Next up, we go to Titusville where they were hosting the Corey Beavers. Scoreless in the second, but Corey is driving on the busted play. Quarterback Nathan Lesher makes something out of nothing to move the chains. Later on in the drive, Lesher with the designed run this time. And He's able to get a couple yards on that play. Corey trying to go for the air, and the pass gets tipped. The big man, Zach Whitney, comes up with the pick, but Lajnosko takes the ball from him, and he's off to the races. Big fella thinking he's got a fumble recovery for a touchdown after he stole it from his teammates. But they're going to call it back. Still got the interception, though, eventually. It's Titusville picking up the victory on that beautiful new turf at Carter Field. They go on to win this one 18 to nothing. Scores from around District 10 elsewhere. Greenville over Lakeview tonight 49 to 15. Farrell shutting out Mercer 66 to nothing. As well it was uh, Reynolds over Kennedy Catholic tonight 40 to 14. University Prep late to start but a win over Sharon 21 to 14. As for the games on Saturday, Fort LaBeouf set to open their season at Carbonito Field at 7 o'clock against Grove City, and it's Harbor Creek trying to move to 2-0, as well as Warren trying to move to 2-0. That game out in Warren County at 7 o'clock. Sharpsville hosting Slippery Rock Saturday at 7 as well. For the first time in nearly two years, the Merciers football program will play a meaningful regular season game this fall when they make their home debut against Alderson Broadus. On Saturday evening, head coach Marty Schetzel begins his 20th and final season as Lakers head coach after announcing that he is retiring at the end of this year's campaign. On Tuesday, the Lakers announced that assistant head coach and defensive coordinator Ryan Remedio will take over for Schetzel as head coach starting 2022. In the meantime, the excitement and focus is in the here and the now, and the Lakers are more than ready to go this weekend. I think we're excited. Again, we're, we're a very talented group on offense across the board. Quarterback room's one of the most talented we feel like we've ever had here. Receiver group is young but very talented. You know, Justin Hill and DeAndre Cooper are seniors leading that group along, showing the young guys how it goes. You know, running back room by committee, O-lines all back from last year. We're very, very excited up front and on offense to really put up some points this year. You know, it's been a long last fall and spring up until this camp. We've been working our butts off. I mean, you saw last year we didn't get much playing time at all. I mean, we played a scrimmage in a game it didn't go our way but I think a lot of guys are ready to get back on the field I mean I'm, I'm very excited to get on the field I haven't played in a couple of years so I'm ready to get out there and make some things happen but as a team I think the intensity is up there I mean a lot of guys are like Joe said ready to hit someone else in green and white it's not in green and white so we're very excited to get out there and play someone we continue to get better you know we had a, we had a really good camp I think we probably made as much improvement during camp both in X's and O's conditioning uh, mental conditioning uh, the whole the whole package uh, during camp and anytime it started to become a challenge our guys responded very well the Lakers take on Alderson Broadus Saturday night at Saxon Stadium. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. Meanwhile, the Allegheny Gators will begin their regular season at home on Saturday afternoon. They will entertain Teal. Game time is at 1 p.m. The Seawolves have won three straight games, trying to make up ground in that crowded Southwest Division race for a po possibly postseason contention race. And they're doing it without Josh Lester, who was recently promoted to Toledo, and mm -hmm. then Lester today winning the AA Northeast Player of the Month Award for the month of August as well. Meanwhile, his teammates back here in Erie continuing that series with Harrisburg, top of the first, and it's Rhett Wiseman 
But the RBI single right field, Cole Freeman scores, 1-0 Senators. Later in the first, Arias charged with a balk. Harrisburg cashes in on another run, 2-0 Senators. Seawolves would get one of those runs back, Brady Policelli. Right back up the box for the RBI single, Andre Lipsius would score from second. Erie down 2-1 at that point. Plenty of offense by both teams, but the Seawolves would eventually fall to the Senators 9-6. Cabrera going 2-3 for three in the contest, including a home run. Kerry Carpenter going 2-5 for five with a triple and two runs batted in. And the Erie Otters signed these six players to the 2021-2022 roster prior to tomorrow's opening preseason game of the year. Erie will host Saginaw the Spirit on Saturday at 2 o'clock from the Erie Insurance Arena. Don't forget, admission free for all three home preseason games thanks to, to UPMC Health Plan.